The last section on the balance sheet that we're going to investigate is the section on long-term debt. And airlines are such capital-intensive organizations that you're generally going to find very, very high levels of debt on their balance sheets. Um, and if you're doing financial analysis of an airline, you're really going to want to pay attention to that debt level how that debt level has been changing over time, what they're using that debt for, and and if the company is getting into a situation that they're so leveraged that the the burden of of maintaining that debt is getting in the way of the health of the company. Now, that's not to say that debt is a bad thing. Debt is certainly a very useful way of managing the capital structure of an airline, just as it is for an individual. So just to just to make this clear, I wanted to go back to our initial example when we when we were looking at the balance sheet in the introductory video. I drew this simple example of an individual's balance sheet. So we had an individual who wanted to purchase a house. The house was one hundred thousand dollars, and he had thirty thousand dollars worth of cash. So that was the equity he could put into the house. Well, in order to purchase that house, he needed to go take on some debt. So he went to the bank and borrowed $70,000 via a, merge, uh, a mortgage. And through that leverage, his ability to leverage his cash, he was able to purchase a much more expensive asset than he otherwise would have been able to purchase if he could only use his cash. So, so debt really allows individuals to get into homes they otherwise wouldn't be able to afford and it allows airlines to grow at a pace that they otherwise wouldn't be able to finance if they weren't able to take on that debt. Now just as individuals can get into trouble with debt so can airlines. So let's let's uh, assume the house was $250,000 and this person only had $10,000 worth of cash and he was able to find a bank that was able to give him a big mortgage that uh, he was able to just get by making these payments. Well, what happens if that person loses his job or has some unexpected other expense? He could very easily get into trouble and not be able to pay off that debt and even lose the house. Well, it's the same thing with airlines. When airlines get too aggressive on growth, when they take on too much debt and buy too many airplanes and expand to too many cities, if something happens to their revenue or their cost, if, if the economy takes a downturn and fares go down and people stop flying so much, or if fuel spikes and their costs go up, they can very easily get into a situation where that debt becomes such a big burden that they're not able to um, uh, not not able to manage the finances of the company. So you really do want to take a look at the debt that airlines are taking on. Is it a level that they can manage? And really over time, how are they doing servicing that debt? So let's take a look at Southwest Airlines and let's take a look at their debt balance. So I'm going to scroll down to the liability section and we already looked at current liabilities and we said those are liabilities that need to be satisfied within a year. Well the long-term liabilities, the long-term debt here is the are the liabilities that need to be satisfied beyond a year. And in reality actually the debt, a lot of debt is just refinanced over time. It's not even paid off at the maturity date. But so these are long-term obligations. And we're not going to look at the rest of the items here. We're going to just focus on debt because that's so important to airlines. So let's see over here on the most recent quarter of September. So this is the most recent quarter, third quarter of 2013. Southwest was carrying $2.6 billion worth of debt. Well, looking at that number in absolute terms doesn't tell us a whole lot. Just, just as we were looking at other uh, figures in the balance sheet and income statement videos, without putting that that number in some context it's hard to draw any conclusions. Well there's a couple of things you can do by just looking at Air, uh, Southwest's balance sheet and then some other interesting things you can do by looking at the industry comp. So let's just take a look at Southwest to begin with. So one thing you can do is look at how the debt level is changing over time. Is it spiking or is it decreasing? 
Now this is these are quarterly periods, and you might want to it might be better to look at uh, debt levels changing annually. But we have this in front of us, and you can see over the over the four quarters here, the debt has actually been decreasing. So that's a good sign. It's really not enough to know. You know, that's not enough to draw any conclusions yet because how is the debt decreasing? Well, if the um, uh, if the airline has stopped growing and they need less debt, that might be, you know, not a very positive thing. So let's see what else we can see. Well, if we go up here, uh, let's look at our cash line, just the cash line. Over that same period, the cash balance has pretty much been growing. So it doesn't look like they're just paying off their debt with cash. Uh, it looks like you know, perhaps through income, they've been able to add to their cash balance as well as uh, decrease their debt levels. And their stockholders equity has also, uh, well, it's been going, it's held, held about steady, I guess. So no changes in stockholders equity to uh, raise any red flags. So from this cursory look of the balance sheet, I don't, I don't see any red flags. And just having knowledge of Southwest, I mean, Southwest has a great balance sheet. I uh, wouldn't expect to find anything um, really striking here. I think actually the more interesting balance sheets are the ones uh, in their industry peers. So let's take a look at some other airline debt levels. And what I have here is some key metrics, what, what are called, or I think uh, Yahoo calls them key statistics. So if you go to Yahoo Finance, they summarize, summarize this information really nicely. And we've pulled out this comp set we've been using. And in the balance sheet section on Yahoo, I just highlighted these two rows. And here we can compare the debt level between airlines and then one metric, which I'll talk about in just a moment. So if you look at the absolute debt level, you can see Southwest, our example. Now, in this case, there's a caveat here. So whoever at Yahoo put this spreadsheet together is defining debt as something a little bit different than we saw here. So if we go back to our balance sheet, we can see the long-term debt figure that Southwest is reporting is $2.6 billion. But on this spreadsheet, it says $2.93 billion. So why the difference? Well, I went and did some investigation. And if you're going to do financial analysis, this is the kind of thing you'll have to do. I dug into some other documents and I found that this analyst added to the long-term debt something called capital leases. And a capital lease is a lease, let's assume it was on, on an airplane or a bunch of airplanes. A capital lease is a lease that looks very much like a loan and a purchase. So generally, leases don't show up as debt. They're expenses, and the asset doesn't show up uh, on the balance sheet. But from an accounting perspective, if you're taking on a lease of an airplane, and that lease is as long as the useful life of the airplane uh, that tends to look more like a purchase. And from an accounting perspective, you might want to treat that capital lease as a debt and, a, and an asset. I don't really know if that's the situation. I didn't look, I didn't look that deep into it. But that's, that's a typical way for airlines to, um, to, to lease airplanes. So you just have to sometimes do a little bit more investigation when you're looking across different sources uh, the numbers may not match. In fact, I looked at a couple of different sources for these numbers, and, and for all airlines, they're a little different. I didn't do any further investigation, but just, just keep that in mind. Um, I think the relevant numbers are, are going to be uh, consistent, though. So if you look at just the debt level, so Southwest here has $2.9 billion. Let's compare that to some of the other industry participants. So we have United at 12 billion. We have Delta at 12.5 billion. On the lower end, we have JetBlue at 2.85, Alaska at 1 billion, and then this one outlier here, Spirit at, at zero, so zero debt. And we're gonna take the two real interesting examples here, I think, are Delta and Spirit. 
Did I just call that Southwest? Uh, Delta and Spirit. And we're going to do a little bit more investigation on those two airlines because, uh, gee, Spirit looks fairly anomalous here, does it? doesn't it? And Delta has a very high level of debt. Well, let's look at one other metric before we go into these other airlines. And that's called the debt to equity ratio. So, you know, in finance, a lot of a lot of figures are put into these ratios so that it adds some context. And the debt to equity ratio, so you take the the total debt that the airline has divided by the equity that the airline has. So let me explain that. Or let's let's use an example. So I put I put down the calculation for Southwest here. So I took the 2.9 billion dollars of total debt and then I divided it by their total equity and I'll show you I just simply took that 7.013 billion dollars off of their total equity line and you get this figure here 0.42 which is what Yahoo has so it's simply the debt the debt divided by the equity and what this ratio does is it it gives you some idea of where the financing is coming from so if so to to purchase assets companies get the financing from one of two places they either raise it through debt or they get it from their owners from equity so if you had a debt to equity ratio of one that would tell you that the airline is funding its projects its growth equally through equity and through debt if the if the ratio is less than one as is the case with southwest 0.42 there's uh, uh, more of the funding is coming from equity than from debt and anything above one obviously is the company is leveraging the equity equity to take on more debt than the equity they actually have and the higher this number is the more cause for concern the higher the leverage of the company so let's go back to our simple example and make sure we understand the context of this so what would be our debt to equity ratio here well this person has debt of 70,000 and equity of 30,000 so it's 7 thirds so over 2 so twice as much of the financing for his house is coming from his debt as opposed to his equity if the you know if the mortgage was 50 and the equity was 50 then the debt to equity ratio would be 1 so so instead of looking at the absolute number, you look at this ratio and it gives you some sense of how leveraged the company is or how leveraged the airline is. So let's go back here and then we can look. So so we, we saw these absolute numbers. And of course, you know, some of these airlines are bigger than numbers or others. Let's look at the debt to equity ratios. So Southwest is actually at the low end and that is a very that is a very favorable number for the airline industry. So they they have a debt to equity ratio of less than one and then we're going to talk about spirit uh, but if we look at some of the other figures so Alaska also a very healthy figure less than one JetBlue just above one and then uh, US Airways and so forth United 6.98 and then Delta is 91.36 so Delta has got 91 times more debt than they have equity and you know what I'm going to pause actually I'm going to stop the video here because we're out of time and then in the next section or in the next video we're going to go deeper into some of these or we're going to go into these two balance sheets because I think it's really interesting.